It's been a great few weeks since I last did one of these videos, but oh yes, yes, hello everybody, it's Foxy speaking. I, I have not forgotten you all when you're whilst uh, in the making of this very video, so I will. A little, there we are. Sorry, the chair was not completely right. I had to slightly adjust it. <laughs> that was a little silly of me. Apologies for that. I know, although one person will say, Oh, there's no need to apologise. You're fine. Come on, now. <laughs> you know, no need to apologise and would do this insignia. <laughs> you know. But uh, this is an episode. It's a great few weeks later. The most recommended YouTubers. And this is episode 11 now. And who I believe should be one of the most recommended YouTubers for 2023, that is. Certainly want to get it done before 2024, otherwise I'd have to retitle it Most Recommended YouTubers for 2024, <laughs> episode whatever, you know. I'll start again. <laughs> what guilty pleasure, you know. But yes, 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 if I now might say who I personally do believe should be one of the most recommended YouTubers for 2023 in episode 11 is the really she may be a little bit outspoken when it comes to swearing the reacting and swearing which is the outspoken side of her but she's got a very good welcoming and friendly side and I and it means a lot and she's always very good at kindly representing an audience this lady has no introduction, or needs no introduction, Fiona Hesketh, or Avid Gardener, that is. That's what her YouTube channel titling username comes under, Avid Gardener at Fiona Hesketh, the, the dearly loved wife of that of the enchanting and certainly brilliant man, Graham Hesketh, or Graham the Baron Hesketh, and not Baron Silas Greenback. <laughs> so what's up now? It's time to get up to absolute no good or that sort of thing. No, 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 no. He is not Baron Silas Greenback. Just because Graham Hesketh is a Baron himself, that doesn't mean he is Baron Silas Greenback from Danger Mouse. He is absolutely not or nothing like that character. Because if he was like Baron Silas Greenback, he'd want me dead. And he would never in a lifetime want me dead. And you know, and, and, you know both Graham and Fiona do mean a lot to me. The friend, and why I believe Fiona Hesketh should be one of the most recommended YouTubers for 2023, I thoroughly believe, is because, you know, my friendship with both Graham and Fiona herself, it is very deeply personal to me. They've had an emotionally moving impact on me, the friendship I've had with them now for the past few months. Uh, having only just found out about them in 2023, but oh my goodness, I'm truly wishing I was friends with them a long time before 2023. I really do. I'm really wishing I'd found out about them when my late grandfather Edmund had just died, you know. I think they would have helped me to have overcome the loss when watching their content and making friends with all the people who follow them, you know. I really do believe um, if I'd made friends with all the friends and followers who follow Graham and Fiona themselves, I really think when watching them and making friends with their followers, it would have really helped me possibly overcome the loss of my late grandfather Edmund quicker than before and probably open up about his death in full quicker. I could open up about his death, say a few, about six or so months after he died, or a year after he died, but it was not, I couldn't really open up about it in full until about two, three years after his death. You know, because I was, you know, because Edmund's death devastated both me and my family greatly. But what was worse, I mean, it might sound a little irrelevant to the video, but what was worse was that Edmund's, Edmund's death took a very, severely took a very heavy emotional toll on my grandmother Anne, who's still alive, as of 2023, nearly 2024, just to say, and she never completely recovered from the loss. 
you know. I mean, she did make a recovery to some extent, but she never completely recovered from it, I'm afraid, which is the sad thing, really, you know, because she's not completely the same person she once was since he died. I mean, it doesn't stop her living life to the full, luckily. It fortunately has not got to the point where she's given up living life. She, was, she still very much lives life to the full, but she's just not the same character as one could imagine when losing a spousal companion and all that, you know. You know, so I think that's really one of the reasons why I wish I was friends with Graham and Fiona much earlier than um, 2023, because I think they would have helped me overcome the loss of my late grandfather quite a lot more quickly, you know. Because oh, uh, obviously that was really very, that was devastatingly sad when I lost him, you know. I did actually open up about the loss of Edmund, I think either Graham and Fiona or just Graham, I think it was, you know. As you know, you know, it was that week, it was that summer back in August of 2019. We had that summer where, you know, I just, you know, I just, I just knew, you know, that he was not gonna, not gonna survive a good f few more years, you know. You know, and he'd lost a lot of weight by that point. I could remember going out with him just, you know, it was, what, six months before he died. You know, you know, you know, you know it, 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 it was something I found quite difficult to come to terms with, you know. You know, because he was such a wonderful grandfather, you know, but he, I couldn't, I could see that there was something wrong, but I didn't realise there was something so seriously fundamentally wrong with his thrombocythemia issues and the issues he had with his thrombocytes, you know. But he had uh, thrombocythemia, and at the time of his death, he had one million platelets, far too many. And, you know, and we only just found this out just after he died, you know, which could explain why he was in his deterioration in health happened so much more quickly than we'd imagined. Because he was only diagnosed with thrombocythemia in 2018, but I truly believe he was showing signs of it in 2017, you know. I truly do believe that. And I really, if... I mean, sadly one cannot go back in time, but if I could go back in time, but obviously in reality I sadly cannot, it doesn't work like that, but you can say it, but you cannot actually do it, going back in time. But if I could go back in time, it would certainly be um, my grandfather's fate, you know. And the fate I'm referring to in this sense, is um, this genetic sense, is that um, I probably would have asked my grandmother, you know, to try and try and take him to the doctor, maybe say in 2017, rather than waiting to go until 2018 when he lost more weight, you know. I think had he been diagnosed in 2017, or seen the doctor for the diagnosis in 2017, I think, um, I think they would have been able to have he would have been medicated earlier, and I don't think his side effects would have been as great when he undertook the medication. Because when he undertook it, when he was first diagnosed, or in the early days, it took the medicinal drugs he took for it, it just took a terrible toll on his health. It really just drastically took a terrible toll, you know, on him. I mean... I think had he been medicated a year earlier, I think, I don't think the toll, tolling effect would have been, would have been as great. Well, obviously one cannot, cannot be certain for sure, you know. But, um, and I think it could have bought him a bit more time. I think had he been diagnosed earlier in 2017 and medicated earlier in 2017, I think he could have probably lived on until about maybe 2023, 2024, maybe even 2025, something like that, you know. But being, when he was first medicated in 2018, I would have thought, I don't think he'd make it to 2025, but I think he'd probably make it to about 2022, 
2023, something like that, I would imagine. But obviously, how wrong was I, and how and how badly it affected him, especially since he suffered a severe heart attack well over 20 years prior to his thrombocythemia diagnosis and then being fitted with a bloody quadruple bypass, quadruple bypass surgery, and he was only about 50 at the time, as he was only 73, going on for 74, when he sadly died, which was, that obviously, as I said before, was devastatingly sad. It, uh, but I'm fortunate for the memories I have of my grandfather, you know, and I did overcome the, the loss, his loss, um, eventually in full, but it did take me quite a long time, you know, it took me longer than it would, than it originally had, you know, because the loss was just so great, you know, but I really would, if I could go back in time, I would tell my grandmother that something could be seriously wrong with my grandfather, and that it would be best to get him to take him to the doctor to see if they could try and see what the problem is. And if that had happened then I really do believe he would have been diagnosed with thrombocythemia earlier. You know, I really do think he was diagnosed too late. And at the moment there is no medicinal cure for thrombocythemia, but the medicinal drugs you can take for thrombocythemia can stop the condition itself from getting worse and stop the thrombocytes issues and the blood platelets issues from getting worse, but it does not completely cure it, I'm afraid, which is sad, but hopefully one day in the future there will be a medicinal cure for thrombocythemia, we never know, and then it could be cured, but we'll have to see if it's going to happen, you know. But I'm sorry if I was shedding too much about the loss of my grandfather, because it obviously was deeply great on me, and that obviously was De and I obviously devastated myself and the family, particu and particularly affected my grandmother, where well, it affected her the worst, as said before, you know. But obviously I did, if it, one must move on from the worst effect of the loss, but it's not something you'll ever forget when losing any family relative, whether that be your grandfather, your, your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, or your your uncles and aunts, your cousins, great uncles, aunts, great grandparents. I mean, death eventually happens. Don't get me wrong, I'm thoroughly aware of it. Death eventually has to happen at some stage in our life, but we just don't know when it will happen when we look at things philosophically and all that. But getting to why I truly believe Fiona should be the most recommended YouTuber for 2023, rather than talking about uh, Edmund's fate, which what I would would have wanted to secure if I could go back in time, but obviously we cannot now, and... No, but rest assured, rest assured, if I dare, I'd say one more time, I've certainly moved on from the worst effect of the loss of my late grandfather Edmund. But it just took me time, that's all. And it obviously took me time to open up about it without getting very, very upset, because if I did open up about it, even in, say, 2021, or even in the early part of 2022, if I opened it up in full, it would have made me very, very upset. It really, it just, it was, I only was able to talk about bits of it at a time. Over time, I could talk about it more, but just not straight away. It really took me time to really open up about the full extent of the loss and how deep it was and and what it was like seeing him in the last few months before he went, because I did see him in the last, a great few months before he died, and witnessed what it was like, and seeing the condition he was in, you know. But getting to why, I truly believe Fiona Hesketh herself, from the Avid Garden and YouTube channel, should be the most recommended YouTuber for 2023, is because, you know, she can, she does represent things quite in a really reasonably, a relatively interesting way, I must admit. And particularly the story she spoke about, about, I think it was, though it was not a real uncle, I think she referred to him as Uncle Jerick and Auntie Vera, that story, that was particularly interesting. In a way, it could have been the debut series of Fiona's fun, inspirational chats when she was opening up about 
Jeric and Vera, or Uncle Jeric and Auntie Vera, which would be considerably more respectful to her if we said Uncle Jeric and Auntie Vera, even though they were not her real aunties and uncles, they did mean a great, great deal to Fiona when she was growing up as a child, you know, like really, seriously, they meant a tremendous, a tremendous amount to her, and this is as truth evidently has it, you know, and she is quite, and she has a, one of the greatest qualities about Fiona herself is that I've seen many people who respect the royal family, but Fiona, she has the deepest and the greatest respect towards the, mon the royal family and the British monarchy out of many people I have ever met. Yes, I mean, I've met people who appreciate the British monarchy and the royal family, for certain, but I haven't met anybody who's appreciated it more than Fiona. Really, really, Fiona has probably got to be one of the only people I know who profoundly, like very, very seriously, profoundly, has a great deal of respectability and high regard towards the royal family. Despite having some cynically opposed views towards the Harry and Meghan, contra the controversially pressed Harry and Meghan Markle saga, which is still fairly ongoing, but it has been quite ongoing for a great while now, as far as I'm certain, even though I don't follow it a great deal, I only really follow a, f a few certain remnants of when Fiona is representing it from time to time, you know. But uh, she, Fiona has got to be one of the only people I know who has such a great, great high regard and huge amount of respectability towards the royal family itself and the British monarchy. But don't get me wrong, if you are watching Fiona and Graham, I do, I have met a great many people who do respect the royal family and the British monarchy. I too very, very much respect the royal family and the British monarchy. And I have a great deal of respect for our newly crowned King Charles III and Queen Camilla, the Queen Consort, his dearly loved wife, you know. And I had a lot of respect for our late Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II and the late Prince Philip, who both sadly died within a year of each other, Prince Philip in April 2021, and our late Her Majesty the Queen Elizabeth II in 2022, which was very sad when they went, you know, but obviously they were very old, they were over the age of 95, so they did quite well, you know. So, uh, I do... I really do respect you greatly for this, Fiona, if you are watching and listening. I've never met anyone who's respected the royal family or had such high regard for the royal family other than you. Really, I do appreciate this greatly and I really do believe all should respect, just in my opinion that is, that all should respect the royal family greatly and have and feel that we should be grateful for the royal family themselves. Really, I do. I truly do believe that. And another thing I'm extremely grateful towards Fiona for was that it was about a couple of months ago in September of 2023, I stumbled over to... It was on Graham's channel that did the live stream session. And... Um, Fiona had never viewed my content before, but that's okay. Although I think she was aware of me, but just didn't view my content at the time until shortly after that particular live stream when it happened, you know. And she's like, oh, Foxy, is that the dude in Brighton? She was asking Graham, as far as my recollection goes, when I was viewing the live stream session, because I witnessed it. I'm not saying that as a crime witness, I'm saying it as just a casual witness. You know, because there was no nothing criminal involved going on in that. It was just a, a friendly um, and good uh, live stream session that was going on at the time. Rest assured, if I dare might say. But they're good people. They would never do anything bad in, their, in a live stream session. They're, they're brilliant when it comes to a live stream session, I must say. But yes, she was like, is, that the, is this Foxy the, the English dude who's based over in Brighton? As far as I'm certain, that is. I was like, oh, yeah, 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 he does these Ampadura drive events from time to time, whatever they're going ahead. Graham was talking quite highly of me about it at the time, which I didn't expect him to do, but 
once he got, I got to know Graham, and the more he viewed my content, the more he began taking me under his wing a lot, and the more we had some good conversant talking conversations and all that, and we were particularly quite conversant together when it came to the live stream session, or sometimes some other future live stream sessions that take place whenever they're announced in the hand in grip of Graham and Fiona themselves. And shortly after the live stream session, Fiona said something deeply, deeply kind, and it was quite emotionally moving, I must say, when I read the very comment. It w I'm not going to cry, because it meant, really, it was deeply personal to me, and it meant a lot, you know. And then she did a video. I don't know what to say, but... She did a video when she was representing me a few short days after that very live stream session, and I didn't think, never, little could I have thought, that when I was thanking everybody for a certain subscriber milestone, that it would have inspired her enough to thank all of her subscribers, thank, to do a video thanking all her subscribers for subscribing to her content, and then to represent me, and then she ended up representing me to Trevor Cole, who then subsequently represented me as well. And then, and then before long, I received floods of new subscribers. Though I did not expect it, I was, I was extremely thankful for it. And certainly am I greatly thankful for all the new subscribers I've got and all the new friends I've made because of Fiona, and not just Fiona, but also because of her dearly loved husband Graham as well. And Fiona, you and Graham will always be a good couple who will always have a place in my very heart. You will always be my one of my most greatly interesting friends and the friendship I have with the two of you it means a lot to me, and it's deeply personal. And may our friendship flourish happily into the future years to come. And also, another reason why I'm so grateful to Fiona is because um, Fiona's always extremely kind to my two cats, Daphne and Nixie. But please don't worry about mistaking Nixie's name for Trixie. It's an easy mistake to make. But I know you now know it's Nixie now. I know you sometimes make the mistake where it's spelled N-I-X-I-E, but it's N-Y-X-I-E. But don't worry, we all make those mistakes. It's completely fine. Nixie is originally derived from Nix, and Nix is a Greek name, by the way. It's a Greek female name named after, I think it's a Greek goddess, something like that, if you wanted to know. And Fiona also took an interest in the Hove Park Miniature Railway, which is based on the nearing outskirts part of Hove Park. You walk past the playground, keep walking past the, uh, the rock climbing frame and the basketball zone, keep going forward and you'll find the railway there. And it's fantastic and always a great deal of fun to go to. And, uh, though Fiona, yes, she's an outspoken lady and, can, and does swear quite a bit, Maybe not quite as much as, say, Brian Blessed, because if Brian Blessed did videos in the similar format to Fiona, there would be loads and loads of swearing, and actually very, very loud swearing, and probably a lot of crudity with crude language and stuff. But Fiona, I don't think she issues out crudity, but, um, but can swear a bit, as anyone can. But, you know, she is good with representing her content, and I do quite like her content, you know, especially when there's a live stream session, or certainly whenever she's making a video um, featuring her cat as well. Though it doesn't have a proper name yet, I think a good name for a cat, I think it's a female, I think a good female name for a cat would be Finn Vola. I think that would be a fantastic name for a cat, but it's just a suggesting recommendation, and it's only my my opinionated thoughts all the same, you know. 
But Finvola is a fantastic name for a female cat. Fiona, Fiona and Finvola. They'll go brilliantly. But I'm not trying to take the mickey. I'm certainly not. I was just expressing my opinionated thoughts on if their cat was named Finvola, if it's a female, that is. And a male cat... I think, um... I think Abdul is a good name for a female, for a male cat. Abdul or or Stanley or Bertie or uh, I was about to say David, but obviously David Scott might watch this. So sorry, David. Excuse you. Uh, maybe not David. No, 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 no. Uh, if it is a male cat, but it still hasn't quite got a name. I think Christian's a good name. Christian, because that's also a given name for humans as well. Uh, or, um... Do, 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 do. Or, uh, or... Not sure what I was going to say, but probably Joseph. That'd be quite good. Or Michael, as I know a Michael, personally. Although he's often Mike, you know, but that's all right. Mike Travis, my good six foot six friend. Oh, huge revelation. But never mind. All right. Well, yes, yes, I think one day they might come up with a nice name for their cat, but who knows? We shall wait and see, you know. But I thought I dare might express the reasons why, uh, why Fiona should be the most recommended YouTuber for 2023, you know, for the last few months. I've had the good fortune to have followed Fiona's content from time to time, and I am subscribed to her, by the way. Yes, she's got well over 20k subscribers, 21.2k as far as what it is when I last checked. And certainly have I had the good fortune to have encountered Fiona, and certainly Graham too, months earlier. His channel months earlier, though I didn't really view it properly till about September of 2023. That is... You know. And also, one of the greatest things about uh, encountering Fiona's content is representing friendship. As it is important, because a good friendship is the most beautiful of all frustrations, because it is more than one can express. And the depth, and the captivated depth of Fiona's ca character sometimes is a continually pressed revelation to me, in every good way possible. And in a way, Fiona could be good at representing stand-up co comedy, given the captivated depth of her outspoken character, whether that be on a YouTube video, or on stage, or anywhere, you know. But I don't mean this badly, I'm only expressing my opinionated thoughts, you know. But, yes, I think uh, this should be it for now, but... Uh, that I thought I'd dare might express the reasoning, the full reasoning behind as to why Fiona herself, from the Avid Garden and YouTube channel, should be one of the most recommended YouTubers for 2023. And I'm certainly do I recommend you subscribe to her to her content. The link to her channel will be found in the description below. And Fiona, I certainly do appreciate you, and certainly do I appreciate your husband Graham very, very much. And not only do I thank your dearly loved husband Graham for taking me under his wing a lot, well, kindly taking me under his wing a lot, I really do want to thank you for the video you did when representing me. And I never could have thought a video I did saying thank you for a, a specific subscriber milestone would have in, been incentivizing enough for you to have done the same sort of thing, really. Little could I have thought that. But it, it was quite moving, you know, really. But I very, very much appreciate you and Graham Fiona. And I do think both of you, think of you both very, very fondly. And I treasure the, fr the friendship with the two of you tremendously fondly. Thanks everybody for watching and please don't forget to subscribe or have a little look at Fiona's channel for those of you who are interested and want to see it. And uh, obviously David Scott is some my best friend 
has sometimes viewed Fyodor's content from time to time, though I don't think he's commented on it before. But he might one day comment on it. And also the video of Fiona when she represented me, and then she'll represent other stuff to her appealing interest as well. That should be linked in this video also. And, uh, and there will be also, there will be a special video link. After the video link of Fiona representing my content and other stuff that's appealing to her interest, that will be linked, to, as I said before, but the video link after that one will be a special video link, which I think both Fiona and Graham themselves will be in for a big surprise if they were to watch it, you know. Thanks everybody indeed for watching, and I shall certainly see you in the very next video. Ta-ta, another time. From Foxy. I do thank you very, very much always, Fiona. Had it not been for you or your dearly loved husband, I'm sure I wouldn't have made the new friends I've got now. I do have many friends, but because of you and Graham, I've made a, I've made swathes and swathes and swathes of wonderful, wonderful new friends, who are deeply loyal to both yourself and Graham, and they've shown really. I never could have expected them to have shown so much loyalty to me in the way they do it to yourself and Graham, and it means a lot. Thanks for watching, Graham and Fiona, if you've been watching. Ta-ta, another time. And thank you always, Graham and Fiona. And thanks, everybody, for watching. <laughs> uh.